Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we watercolor all the time, every day. And you might be sitting there like, I'm not a watercolorist. Well, first of all, watercoloring is just like paper and water and paint. And if you make marks on a paper with those things, you're watercoloring, you're doing it. You like did it. Second of all, oh, did I say first of all? <laughs> okay, we're gonna move straight on. We are painting our December floral project today. This is it. It's so beautiful. Loose. Oh, Great, huh? It's so nice. I'm glad you like it, Keenan. So this is just fun, loose project. I love doing florals because they're freehand, and I know that might seem really scary to you guys, but it's not a big deal. We break it down. I'll show you what to do. We are using five colors today. We are using sea blue, dandelion yellow, pine green, black and red and I put them all on my palette here and I put a little bit too much of all the colors because as you can see they're all blending together so if you have that problem of uh, you know having them blend you could just be using too much paint or your table cannot be level that's also a thing I'm gonna see if that will help um, there are going to be four steps to this tutorial. Step number one, we're gonna put in our big flowers and leaves. Step number two, medium flowers and leaves. Step number three, can you guess? Details? <laughs> Close, small flowers and leaves. I was hoping that with like large, medium that you would guess small. That's okay. Guess details <laughs> way sooner than small flowers. It's valid because step four is details. Oh. So you weren't, I mean, you were a little wrong, wrong. <laughs> but you were close. You were really close. Um, we are currently experiencing a blizzard in Missouri, which is why I'm bundled up in my, um, semi-bundled up. Semi up. I took off a coat, um, but I'm wearing my college sweatshirt, Sacramento State. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using two brushes, a round six and a round two. And you might be like, Sarah, I don't know anything about art supplies. I'm like, I understand. It's pretty overwhelming. So we carry all of this on our website, letsmakeart.com. We even sell little handy kits where if you just wanted to try one without having to buy full bottles of paint, you can get the painting kit for 15 bucks. All at letsmakeart.com. We try and make it easy for you guys because we know that going to art stores and art websites is a lot. So many options. Okay. Sarah, quick question. Yes. How would you feel about moving your cinnamon roll from the image? <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just noticed it. Listen, I'm, I was snacking. Do I need to move my hot chocolate? I actually can't see your hot chocolate. How? How? I don't know. Is that gone? Gone. Okay. Maybe push the cocoa just to scotch. Just in case. I was snacking on Perfect. hot chocolate and cinnamon roll before this. Perfect. Okay. Great. Now we're ready to paint. We're starting with step one. If you're very new to painting, I would suggest watching our live tutorial because I go over warm ups. I kind of take my time. I explain things with people by me who are brand new. So um, if you're nervous about this, watch the live. Either way we're going to paint and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to start by putting our very first floral in. So if you look, at our florals here, you see we have different sizes. And whenever you're starting a composition without any drawings or sketchings, I always like to put in my large flowers first and my large leaves, and then you just fill it in from there. Now, when you put your first flowers in, you do not wanna start directly in the middle because um, it's gonna make it really hard for it to feel balanced if you put a flower directly in the middle with all the other stuff because that's just what I found. But maybe you can find a way, that's fine. Um, so we're going to start directly off center. Now, if you're really nervous about just going straight to the page without an outline, that's totally understandable. There's a couple things you can do. You can take just a really light pencil and lightly sketch out where you want to put things. Nothing wrong with that. Or if you have watercolor pencils, I usually use a gray watercolor pencil to sketch out where I'm going to put things to go. And then once water hits it, that pencil line actually disappears in the water. So um, that's also something to keep in mind if you want to feel a little bit more comfortable drawing something out. But we're just going to go for it here because that's what we do. We just go for things. 
because we're not scared yeah, of a little piece of paper right and paint. It's not scary at all. It's not a big deal. Okay, for my first flower, I'm gonna mix a little bit of black and a little bit of red. Because if you mix these two colors, it's gonna turn like this deep, it almost has a purple tint to it. And it's like this magenta, is man, no, not magenta. Um, what's the word? Burgundy. That's a good word. Burgundy color. It's really lovely, actually. So for our first floral, I'm going to start directly to the left of the middle. And when you do florals, if you've done our rain boots tutorial, I kind of did, um, I kind of went into detail about florals, but we'll do it again. Florals, I like to start off, I'm using my round six, and I'm going to start off doing circular lines around the middle that get longer and thicker as I go out to the edge. See that? See how they're getting kind of longer and thicker? Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse my brush and just use water to do the rest of the lines. And this flower I want big. Now you'll see I'm using the full body of the brush, the full belly of the brush to make these strokes. I'm not using the end doing these tiny little ones. I want full. And we're kind of swooping. We're swoop, 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 swoop. So now I have this big floral. That's bigger than my example, but that's okay. And then I'm going to kind of blend these together just a little bit. But remember to leave some white spaces. It's very important to leave white spaces. Okay, so I'm just dropping in a little bit of color and then kind of just letting it move. I'm doing a couple more intentional brush strokes with this darker color and look how gorgeous that is. And you just kind of leave it be and you move on. So we did that one. Now for my next flower, I used a lot of water to blend it out so it's kind of more loose. This one, I kind of kept those detail lines sharp. I didn't blend a ton and that's just because I wanted a variation within my florals. So I'm gonna do the same thing, grab that color. I'm gonna to go to the right of it and up a little bit is where I'm gonna start my middle. And just kind of do alternating or staggered curved lines that keep kind of going around. Start to let them get swoopy at the end. So they're nice long swoops. And now I'm gonna rinse my brush so it's a lighter color and do a couple more swoops. But I don't want to blend in the middle too much because I want to keep some of that detail. And that's just, that's just my personal choice. As you paint, you can make these decisions yourself. Maybe you like this look better than that look and you're like, I want all of them to be like this thick, loose feel. Go for it. That's totally your right. This is your painting. This is your world. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to drop in some color. Now with florals, I know that we have a tendency to want to keep working them and keep going back and doing back and forth, but a lot of it is just putting your breast stroke down, putting your color in and letting it be. You just gotta, you gotta be loose, you gotta be relaxed, it's not a big deal. Just remember, it's not a big deal. Okay, so I did my first two larger flowers, I'm gonna do one more, one right here. Now this flower is actually white, but in order to paint white on a paper, you have to give it some sort of depth. So you can either mix a little bit of color into it and it will give you a different effect. So if I'm trying to paint white flowers, a lot of times I'll put a little bit of gray in there or I'll put a little bit of green in there and it will come across as white. I know that sounds funny. You have to trust me on this. So I'm gonna actually rinse in this other cup that has very little color because I'm gonna be using mostly water to paint this flower, so I don't wanna use this water because then it will turn out pink. So I'm using this one that's more clean. I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and add some water to it to make it gray. So I added water for my gray slash white flower. 
And it's, remember, it's super watered down. If you're not used to painting with watercolors, but you have painted before using acrylic and oil, it is super easy to think that you need a ton of paint on your brush for your image to come across. Watercolor, it's not the case. You embrace the water, you let the water in the paper do most of the work for you. That's why I like it so much. It's like, so, you don't have to do as much work, I feel, as with oil, which is so nice. Listen, I'm a little lazy, but it's okay. All right, it doesn't matter. So really let that gray wash be nice and light. Nothing wrong with it if it's barely there. And I'm gonna be doing the same kind of idea with start, starting small, small circular lines that are staggered. And as they go out, they get longer and thicker. So you can see this color is barely there. That's okay, that's what we want. Same thing, I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I'm just going to start doing swoops. Again, if you're new to watercolor, you might be like, this color is barely showing up. That's kind of what we want. Also, I'm kind of touching the red and it's bleeding a little bit. I think that's really cool. I like it when things like that happen. If you don't want that to happen, then don't touch your wet wash with your other red flowers. If they don't touch, then the color won't bleed together. And then I'm gonna put a slightly darker center. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more black. Now you might be wondering why we want the lines to alternate and get bigger as they go out. And that's because if you look at like a rose, the petals are super tight in the middle. And then as the flower blooms, the petals actually expand out and go out this way. And that's what we're trying to communicate, which is it's nice and tight in the middle. So that's why those lines are small, close together. And then as they go out, they're blooming. So those petals themselves are gonna be going away. And so that's why they get longer and thicker is because we're showing that it's getting the petals. We are seeing more of the petals themselves as they get to the edge of the flower. Keenan, does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Wonderful. Put some more depth in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so I just did my big flowers and now I'm gonna do my larger leaves. So, for your larger leaves, here's the beautiful thing about leaves is um, you can make them kind of any colors in terms of green. Now you can see here, that my leaves right here, this is more, I added yellow to my green, so it's a warmer green. And then these ones, I added the sea blue and maybe a tiny bit of black. And that's why they kind of have a cooler green and why they're a little bit darker or grayer. Um, so it's kind of fun because colors kind of have temperatures. So just mix accordingly to what you want to do. I'm going to start with a big green yellow leaf over here. So I'm going to kind of put it in going off to the side. When you're doing florals, you don't want things to go straight up and down. It would be very distracting visually. So you always want things, whether they're stems, whether there's um, like this eucalyptus that we're gonna put in, see how I have them going off in directions and they're not directly up and down. Just keep that in mind. So I'm putting in my leaf here going off to the side, and then I'm gonna drop in some yellow. And you can just drop it in while it's wet, and it will just expand, or kind of bleed out. And maybe I'll add a little bit of blue-green to the tip. Yeah, look at how nice and dark that is. Okay, so there's a leaf. I'm gonna do another leaf. I got my water dirty, dang it. That's a kale rinse. I'm gonna do another one kind of coming out this way. Drop in some yellow. And again, I'm just kind of dropping it in. Make it a little dark. You can put in some extra color at the tip. Okay, now I'm gonna do my stems. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of my blue with a little bit of green and a little bit of black. 
And yet, this is why I like these palettes because you just mix and mix and mix until you get the color that you want. So I'm gonna add a little bit more green to that. That feels good. And I always like when I'm doing these stems with leaves, I always like to do the very top leaf first because then I know where it ends. So I get to kind of choose how far it goes. So if I'm gonna do one right here, then I don't want it to go all the way down here because that would be too long. I want my top leaf to end about right here. So that's where I'm gonna put it. And then I'm just going to do my stem, just a nice, Light pressure, thin line, like that. Again, it's kind of coming out at a curve. It's not going straight up and down. And then remember to let your brush get a little bit wet because we want these different values within our leaves. More water means it's gonna be a lighter value. More paint means it's gonna be a darker value. Darker just means like darker in color. See on this leaf, see how dark that is? That's a dark value and then it gets lighter as it goes out. This is a super light value. It has nothing to do with color, but more about the light and darkness of a color. Another fun thing that I really like to do when I'm doing leaves is while they're wet, I do my leaf, and then I like to drop in a little bit of color and just leave it and it's gonna make really cool textures. And this is the wonderful thing about watercolor, right, is that we kinda of just let it do its thing. We don't try and control every single aspect. And you can get some really cool textures doing it that way. Okay, so I'm gonna do my leaves on the top. Now you can see here that I don't have as much space on the top as I do my example which is not a big deal. I just am going to have to um, be aware of that. So when I do my leaves, I'm gonna have it go a little bit more to the side, like that. See, not a big deal. Then I'm gonna put in my stem, nice, thin. You can do a vertical hold, make sure it's not filled with paint so you still have a nice point. And then do your nice thin line, just like that. And then do your leaves. And maybe you want some of your leaves to have more blue. That's cool. I love having, I love having variation in color and value. So you might be like, that leaf looks, is it matching that one? That's okay, they don't have to match. This is your world you're making. You can make the leaves purple if you want, I don't care. Keenan, what would what color would you make your leaves? I kind of like the autumn colors. So like orange? Uh -huh. Oh, I like those too. Because they're they're warm. They are warm. Good job. Thank you. Did you learn that watching? I did. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. Okay. So I have my big leaves. I have another big leaf that needs to come out here and we're almost done with step one. You guys are doing great. Step one is the hardest when you're doing large, like loose florals like this because it kind of sets your composition. But it's okay. It's just paint, it's just water, not a big deal. What do you mean sets your composition? So the reason why we wanna start with our big first is because it gives us the idea of what our composition is gonna look like, which is just basically what, how the object is positioned on the paper. That's composition. Okay, so when you're thinking about composition, just in terms of like, if we start off with tiny flowers first, and their tiny flowers are just randomly around the page, and we do that step one, where nothing's touching and nothing is connected, then we're not entirely sure what our floral bouquet is going to look like. But if we start off with the big elements first and the rest of it is just filling in space to look at more full, then we have a basic idea of how this is gonna look the entire time. So that's why we start with the larger areas first because it defines our composition. It defines where things are going to be on the paper and we make adjustments to that. So whenever you're starting with, if you notice all of my elements are pretty much touching and that's exactly what we want. If you do your flower over here and you leave this huge gap in between these two flowers, 
when we get closer to the end, you're going to be like, shoot, I have a gap in the middle of my page. What do I do? Which you can absolutely just fill it, but it's easier if you just let them start touching from the beginning and then all you're doing is just making it more full. Does that answer your question? That did answer my question. <laughs> I feel like halfway I forgot what your question was and just no, that was, good. was talking. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do my other leaf going this way. And to do a thin and thick line like this, I'm going to start off light pressure, which is a point, press down so the full belly of the brush is touching the whole paper, and then lighten back up. If that's too much for you, then you can just draw it and then fill it in. It's not a big deal either way. No right and wrong way to do it, just whatever your style is. I'm gonna drop in some yellow. And you might notice that on some of my leaves, I leave like a little bit of a thin line. That's totally up to you if you wanna do that. I like it because it kinda of just adds interest and maybe might act as like the vein of the leaf a little bit, but if you don't like it, then just fill it in. Not a big deal. Okay. So that is step one. You guys did step one, you're, you're doing so good. It's the hardest part, so you're doing great. Now we're gonna move on to step two. Okay, so step two is just the medium flowers and the medium leaves. So just keep in mind that the next leaves and fl flowers you put in are just gonna be smaller than the ones you just did. That's it. So I'm gonna start off with some gray. I'm gonna do the small gray flower over here. Now, my friends, this is a thing with following along with somebody is you might be like, shoot, I didn't leave enough room for this flower or mine slightly different. That's okay. Mine's different every time. I painted this and I, and I painted this and they're so different and that's fine. You just have to be able to adjust to it. So on my example, I have a flower right here, which is to the left of this big flower. But if you look, I'm getting close to the edge of my paper here and I don't want it to go off the edge of my paper. That's that's bad compositionally. So I just have to adjust. So I don't have room to do a flower right here, but I have room to do a flower right here. So that's where I'm gonna put it. So this is where it's great to just take a step back, look at your paper and be like, okay, I might not fit a flower here, but I can fit one here, I can fit one here, I can fit one here. Just play with it. So I'm just gonna grab some black for my gray flower. And this one is gonna be more on its side. So these ones we're kind of looking at overhead. And this one and this one, you can see here, are kind of angled like they're turning away from us. And the process is the same, it's just that you are going to do more of one side than the other. So if this is the middle of my flower, I'm gonna start doing this, the alternating circular lines around it. And then because it's on its side, I'm gonna see more of the right side of it and just a little bit of the left side. And then you just take your water, start swooping, start blending. So because we built up more of one side and not as much as the other side, then it's a little bit more clear to our viewer that that flower is at an angle. So there's that. Now I'm gonna do the red one over here, or I guess more of the burgundy one. And you can adjust the levels of red and black you have in your mixture if you want a color difference between these flowers. Also, if you mix your red and your sea blue together, you will get a purple. So if you wanna introduce purple in there, do it. You can. So I'm starting with my center. And then alternating lines, and I'm gonna build up my left side more than my right. Now I rinse my brush, and I start swooping it out. Remember, just loose brush strokes, be confident, you know, just be like, Whatever, I can paint flowers, you know what I mean? Not a big deal. Okay, so that's pretty much my florals. We do have a couple other ones. I'm gonna do those in the next step. So I'm gonna move on to my leaves. So 
I'm gonna mix a little bit of black, green, blue. I just really like this kind of desaturated green color. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit more green on my palette. Maybe mix a little bit more black in there. Okay. And so my, these stems are gonna be similar to these ones, except a little bit smaller. I'm gonna have this one go this way. And then put your stem in. And you can see I have a gap in there. I don't let things like that bother me. Don't, don't get mad. Okay, it's not a big deal. And trying to go back in and fill in that line would be such a pain when I bet you didn't even notice that I have it in this one right here. Because nobody does notice those little things. Only you do. So give yourself a break. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to put my leaves in. If anything, lines like that make it have more texture. Look more natural. Natural, character. It makes it your own. Yeah. We embrace these things. We love them. Okay, now I wanted this leaf to feel like it's coming out from behind the flower, which is why I didn't paint over my red. If I try to paint over my red, it would that leaf would be more on top of the flower. I don't want that. And two, even though I didn't say one, two, uh, watercolor is transparent. So if I try to paint over this leaf, you would still see the red underneath it. And I don't want that because that would actually turn it to like a muddy color. Not interested. So that's why I kind of cut it at the end there. So it's kind of behind it. And now I think we can start putting in some eucalyptus here. So for our eucalyptus like stems, I think these are called silver. Oh, I Boxes. No, <laughs> I always forget. I want to say silver dollar, but I know that's not it. I think it's blue, blue stemmed eucalyptus. Earring. It's just this, can you say earring? Herring. <laughs> I thought you were like earrings, and earrings. I'm like, that's not yeah. even close. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna switch actually to my round two for this. Now, the eucalyptus I'm kind of talking about, it's just on one stem, and then the leaves kind of poke off from around the one stem. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna start off with kind of like a curved line that goes into a point where it meets the stem. So it's gonna curve out like this. And then if your painting is wet, don't put your wrist in the wet paper. I'll do my line. And then when you're doing your leaves off of this, this is what you're gonna to wanna to do. You're gonna to wanna to keep doing this shape on both sides all the way down. But what that does is it makes it seem really flat and we wanna make it clear that these leaves are going all the way around the stem. So there's gonna be some in the front. Those are just gonna be curved lines like this. We have some that are coming off the back. So even though those look like weird moon slices or something, they're gonna give our viewer more of an understanding that these leaves off the stem are in the front and the back and going all the way around. It's okay to have some like this off to the side because that's how you will see it also, but also have some, these kind of little slivers on there too. Because it's gonna give your eucalyptus a whole different look if you do that than if you did this all the way down. I'm gonna do another one coming out this way. And sometimes people ask me like, well, where should my stems be coming from? And I pretty much just say the center. It doesn't have to be coming from this leaf. It doesn't have to be coming from one point. It can be coming out from the middle of a flower. That's not a big deal. But I just try and pretend that there is like a circle here and all of my stems and leaves are coming out of that circle. And then do some swooshes. You can add a little bit of yellow in there for variation if you want. Remember, it's your painting, it's your life. 
do what feels right to you or what's fun or and maybe you just want to try something and you're not sure if it's going to turn out do it you know it's not a big deal it's just paper and paint okay so i have my that eucalyptus there's another one coming out over here and you can adjust this however you want remember you don't have to follow me exactly so just kind of play with it. I'm going to have this eucalyptus just come out just through here. If you're on this step and you're not really sure where you should put stuff next, what's really helpful in terms of composition and figuring out is take your painting and walk away from it and look at it from far away. And when you look at paintings from far away, it gives you a better idea of how things are situated on the paper and it gives you a better idea of your color. So take a break in the middle of your painting, you know? Take, look at it, step back. Okay, there's another eucalyptus. Great, that's it, that's step two, we finished it. Now we're on to step three, which is we are going to be putting in our s'more, s'more, <laughs> our small flowers and our small leaves. Now, if you're looking at my painting, and you can probably actually see it better than I can since you guys are looking through this top cam, I have a gap down here that compared to what's up here. See how close this leaf is to the edge of my paper? I don't care about that because I'm actually just gonna trim it down, which is why sometimes cutting your paper is really nice because then if things look a little off-center or crooked, you just trim your paper down and problem solved. So in my head, I know that I'm probably gonna cut my paper off right here. So I'm kind of ignoring this bottom part, okay? So feel free to do that on your own if you have this huge white chunk at the bottom because if I try to make my leaves go all the way down to the edge of this page, then the leaves would take so much over the composition, I would lose the central feel of my flowers. So I'm just gonna trim my paper down and it's gonna solve that problem. See, solving problems, that's pretty much what we do. So I'm gonna add a little bit more red because I'm gonna do these like droopy, loose flower things. So, I'm gonna have these ones be a little bit more red. So I'm not gonna mix as much black in them as the other ones. And for these ones, I'm just gonna do kind of circular marks like this. That kind of gets smaller as they go down, kind of like if you think of grapes or something. And then I'm just gonna use some water to smear some of this out. And now because I have water, I got some value changes. I have some light areas and I have some dark areas and that's exactly what we want. And then I like to go in and drop in some color here and there. Remember to leave white spaces in between. It doesn't really matter where, but it's just gonna give us that little extra depth that we're looking for. And I feel like there's a flower like this that's droopy. I don't know what it's called. I'm sure it exists. But that's a great thing about painting is you can make whatever you want. Okay, and I'm going to do, I'm gonna do one coming this way because I need some red here. I just, that's what I feel is the right thing to do. So I'm gonna do it. But I'm just gonna do it a little bit because I don't want to overtake my leaf. And I'm not going to use as much water as I did my other one because I don't want the green of my leaves to like mix with this. Drop in some darker color. There, oh yeah, that feels better. Okay. Okay, so I did my droopies. There's, in my example, I have another droopy on the other side of my flower right here, but I don't feel like that would fit there well. I think that would bring too much attention to the bottom left-hand side. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my little buds. My buds are basically just like leaf shapes that are in the color of the flowers I'm doing. So I'm gonna do some here, and I'm gonna do some over here. 
and here needs some. But I love doing these flower buds because they give me color on the outside of my painting. Because if I didn't do them, then I would just have green. If you're just looking at the perimeter of my painting, is that the right word? Perimeter? perimeter. If you're just looking at the perimeter, it's just green, and I want to introduce some color. So put some flower buds in there, and now you have spots of color on the outside, and it's not just concentrated in the middle. Let's do some right here. Sorry, I balanced my palette on this brush to help it from blending, but I think it's just noisy. Okay. Doesn't this feel kind of like Christmas, these colors? Keenan? I would say cranberry is a very festive color. Cranberry. Excellent color name. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. So I put in my smaller florals. Now I'm going to do stems on these. I'm going to switch to my two because it's easier to do thinner lines with smaller brushes. So I'm going to do little stems, just kind of, again, just generating from the middle. The lines don't have to touch all the way to the stem. Remember, this is more of a loose painting, gestural. And then you can put little leaves on here if you want. Okay, now you kind of look and see what, what gaps do you have. Again, one of the reasons why I love doing paintings like this is because it's a lot of critical thinking. You have to look at your own painting and see where does it feel empty? Where are these spaces? Or where is it distracting? That kind of thing. So for me, my sides are pretty empty but I don't have a lot of room to do these huge leaves. So I'm gonna put some green leaves there and they're just gonna be smaller. So I'm gonna have them going kind of this way. And it's just gonna fill in that space a little bit more so it's not just white. And then I also like to do these tiny itty bitty flowers. I'm going to do these in like a navy almost. I'm going to have it go, let's have it go up. And these are almost like sketch-like where I'm just kind of outlining them. I don't have to fill them in. You're welcome to fill them in, totally up to you. And let's do another one over here. Now, I kind of have a really rough texture and it was, I wasn't getting a smooth line. That just means you need a little bit more water on your brush. So I just dipped it in the water. I dip it and then you hit it off the side because if you only dip it, too much water on your brush and it's dripping. We don't want that. Okay, now this space already feels more filled in because I added these leaves. I put my hand in that and it's smeared. That happens all the time. It's not a big deal. Do you know what you can do if that happens to you? I can do it. I'm just gonna make my leaf a little bit bigger. Problem solved. Don't get mad at yourself if things like that happen. Okay. And then I actually like to turn my paper as I go to avoid the wrist smearing that just happened. So bear with me as I'm doing this from the side. I'm going to do some more leaves kind of coming in through here. And then, but remember to keep like stop, look, and listen. And listen. <laughs> I was just thinking that. What was that about? Was that about crossing the street? Stop, look, and listen. You don't know what you're missing. What is that from? What? That's, that's, the, that's the thing. What are you missing? Oh, cars passing? Isn't that to cross the street? Yep. Yes. I'm just saying. Really Kenan, beautiful. it was beautiful. I really appreciate it. Okay. Now... This is just for me. 
I, I want to put a green leaf right here, a bigger one like this, but like a mini version of that. Cause I just feel like it needs thick greenness on this side. So I'm going to do that right now. Cause I make decisions quickly and I just do it. Yes. That's what I was missing. Just a little green leaf. <laughs> okay. Now I can keep going. Don't be afraid to make decisions quickly. Live in, live on the edge. Okay. Uh, I said it. Oh my God. Just uh, sometimes if you stop and look so much and you're like, I don't really know if I should put that there. Just remember it's a piece of paper. Take those risks. If anything, you learn something. And if you learn something, it was worth it. Life lessons by let's make art. I'm going to fill those in. Okay. Where else is it feeling? It's feeling a little bare right here to me. And I feel like if I fill in that space, I'm going to be done. So that's what I'm going to do. Yes. Yeah. That feels great. Okay. Now I put step four as details. Now this is where it's totally up to you if you want to do this. I always also like to leave the last step as an opportunity for you guys to step back, look at your painting, see what adjustments you need to make. If you feel kind of good about the composition and the coloring, then you can start putting in little details like so. Like maybe I want some of these leaves to have veins. So when they're dry, I can just go in with my paintbrush and do little lines coming through the middle. This technique is called wet on dry because obviously our paint is wet and what we're painting on is dry. That's all that means. That's good. I'm going to do some down here. And maybe you don't like this part. Well, it's your painting. Don't put them in. I won't be mad. Keenan? I'll be mad about it. Great. Don't tell Brock though. I'm just kidding. <laughs> He won't care. Okay. I'm just looking to see if there's any other adjustments I need to make. I feel good about it. I feel really good about this painting. That's it. So if you painted with us, thank you so much for painting with us. First of all, you're very brave and um, I just think you're the best for watching me paint for an hour or so. And you know, maybe you learned something, hopefully you did. If anything, it was just fun. It's just a great time painting. So I would love to share your, see your work. So if you did it, share it, post it on Instagram. You can tag us in it. Let's go make art is our Instagram name. Same on Facebook. We have this wonderful Facebook community called let's make art together um, where it is extremely supportive and people are so kind and it's probably like the best thing about let's make art so join us oh <laughs> you guys you have to um you have to what's the word ask to be a part of it is that the right word request request to be a part of it we let everybody in but we do request a joke when you um like when you add, when you add us. So like all these people I'm accepting, there's little jokes that are there and it's so good. Do you want to hear my favorite one? Yes. Okay. Um, why does Snoop Dogg carry an umbrella? I don't know. Faux drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard when I saw that. So you guys are so great if you're writing jokes when you request to be part of Let's Make Art. It, it really is just making my days. So post that. Again, if you want any of these supplies, you can just get them from letsmakeart.com. And do you guys want to see next week's project? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, let me get it. We are doing the cardinal, it's I'm pretty sure. Yep. The, red <laughs> the red bird, the cardinal. I wanted to make sure this was the right order, order, but it is. It's beautiful. It's detailed. It's a lot of fun. It seems hard. It's not. Just a lot of little steps. So you guys are awesome. Thank you very much. That's all I have to say. Bye. <laughs>